What's up guys, it's Matthew here from Gadget University and I'm here with my Motorola Zoom review. I've had about a week and a half to play with this and I must say I'm very very impressed with Honeycomb and I'm very very impressed with Motorola's tablet. Now there are some some flaws as well, you know, there's always things that you're not going to like about a new gadget or new, new device. But that's what a review is for, so I'm going to cover some things with you guys and tell you what I like and what I don't like about it. First, let's start about, uh, we'll start off with uh, what I do like. Um, I like the design of the tablet. I like the weight of the tablet. Uh, it feels very good in the hands. Uh, as you can see along the bottom, you have all your, your ports. Now, for the most part, as you, can sell, as you can tell, let me try to zoom in for you guys. But you have a proprietary power adapter to, to actually charge the zoom. I found that to be annoying at first, but as with every other tablet out there, the Galaxy Tab and the iPad, um, it requires a certain amount of power to charge these things. So you can't really charge through the micro USB as you would think you could. But you still have the option for the micro USB to charge, excuse me, to sync to your computer. Uh, you also have HDMI out and you have a little dock connector here that is used for the, uh, the uh, accessory docks that they sell. Um, they have an uh, HD dock and then they have a normal desktop dock. Uh, I have one of those. I can review that for you guys later as well. Now, on the front, you have a front facing camera. And on the back, you have a 5, meg five megapixel um, dual LED flash. And this camera is capable of taking uh, 720p video. Also, you have two speaker uh, grills on the back as well. And the power button is, is located. Now, as you can tell, it's not a unibody design. It's not like the iPad. You do have some separation of materials right here. Um, it's all kind of like a aluminum feel on the bottom. Then up here, it's like a rubberized plastic. Um, either way, it still feels very nice in the hands. And that little break in the materials kind of goes all the way around to the front. Um, but as you can see, it's not very noticeable. It kind of looks like the iPhone 4 on the side, if you think about it. Um, then the volume rockers are on the uh, left-hand side. On the right, there's nothing. On the top, you have the 3.5-millimeter uh, headphone jack, and you have your LTE SIM card slot. And right now, this is disabled. And if you can see here, it says, uh, will not be active until you send in for upgrade. Also in here is your micro SD card slot. You can kind of take out the little dummy plastic piece that's in there, and then you can slide your micro SD card slot, uh, micro SD card in there. All right, that's enough of the hardware. Uh, that's what I like about the hardware. What I don't like about the hardware is it's, it's a little heavy. Um, and because of the design, it kind of encourages you to only hold it in the landscape uh, orientation. I don't really like it, but then I do. It's kind of a, a hit or miss. I like the fact that it feels good in the hands because of the curved back. But then when you put it on a table, you can kind of... It's not all the way flat. You know, you can kind of wobble. It's a little wobble. It's not as bad as the iPad 1, but it's still a little bit of wobble. Uh, the screen. I don't really like screen protectors. And as you can tell already, this screen is a fingerprint magnet. I tried everything from, like, that screen film that prevents uh, fingerprints, but it doesn't work. You do have a Gorilla Glass dis uh, display, uh, and it also is running at uh, 1280 by 800. So you're going to get a lot of... Uh, good resolution uh, on this screen. The, gr the Gorilla Glass is very good, uh, so you don't have to worry about dropping it or anything like that, or scratches or other things. Now, if you will drop this from a large place, you will crack the screen. Um, it does weigh about 1.5 uh, pounds, and it does measure about 9.8 inches, 9.8 inches by 6.6 .6 inches tall. So it is a fairly large device. Uh, the screen is a, uh, I think it's like a 9.8 inch screen. 10.1 uh, inch screen. I, I, I really forgot about the size of the screen. I apologize. All right, uh, that's enough with the hardware. Let's get into the operating system. Now, the operating system is Android 3.0 Honeycomb. So you do have a lot of new features. Like uh, like I said before, um, there's no buttons on the uh, Zoom. So you have all your hardware buttons back here, your home, and you have a new button called the multitasking button. You can actually hit this button right here and it'll take you through all your apps that are currently open. Uh, all your notifications come down here. Very unobtrusive. Uh, keeps you, 
you know, control of everything that comes in, and you have, you know, access to your music. I like that. My music pretty much stays open, so I can start it at any point in time. Uh, but as you can see, like the different widgets you have, uh, it's my YouTube widget. I can scroll through my recent. Uh, let me get that glare out. Okay, I can scroll through my my recent uh, subscribers. There, there are uploads. Um, you have your games. Um, you know your music, Pandora, other widgets. Now your back, your bookmarks widgets works the same. You can kind of go in here and you can go to the different folders if you have them. Uh, I'll get to the Chrome browser later, but this is really really cool. I mean, everything's like a interactive, so you can access everything from your home screen. You don't really have to click on the app drawer to really get to your meat and potatoes of the device. So everything can kind of be placed on the desktop, which is a lot of customization um, opportunities for you. Let's go ahead and get into um, the browser. Now, this is basically a Chrome browser, so pages load fairly quick. Um, I did forget to mention that this also has a Tegra 2 chip inside dual core. So you're getting a very, very computer-like experience on a tablet. Uh, there's a one gigabyte of RAM, and there's also 32 gigabytes of internal storage. Um, you also get Wi-Fi, and this is the, the 3G version with Verizon, so I'm always connected to the Verizon network. Now, back to the browser. Because of the browser, it's tabbed. You have an opportunity to really utilize this dual-core processor. I mean, you can multitask your, your butt off, and you can click on here. I'm opening up new tabs. I mean, this is literally verbatim, exactly like Chrome. I have all my bookmarks synced from my computers on here. Uh, anything I sync on a computer will be here. Um, I don't have to worry about um, syncing up my bookmarks, but things scroll and move very quick. Also, with the update that just came out, um, Flash is also enabled. Um, I have a leaked version of Flash on here, so certain sites work very well. Uh, let me go to. Let me show you how quick Flash shows up. See, that was pretty quick. Very responsive. One of the best things about it is you have the multimedia option. So let me show you some movies. I use Rock Player because it plays MKV files, which is uh, Blu-rays. But let me show you... Alright, that's enough of that. As you can see, it's a very funny movie. Um, then you got Nintendo 64 OID. This is the emulator. It's me, Mario. Music to my ears. As you can see, this is really, really great to play on this large screen. And you can do HDMI out, so I can plug this up to a TV and play it in 720p. What else can I show you guys? Now, over the uh, the week I've used this, week and a half, the battery life has been awesome. Uh, right now, I've pretty much been using it all day, and I have 77% left. So that just goes to show you how much life you, know, you can really get out of this. Uh, you can probably get maybe about two days without a charge at all on heavy usage. Uh, multimedia on here is great. Uh, like I just showed you the games and the movies. Um, loud music doesn't really sound that great. These speakers in the back sometimes distort. Um, I'm not sure why, but even with some of these alerts, like when you get a text, excuse me, an email or something happens, your alerts come up. Certain of the certain sounds in the alert options, like uh, the different sound notifications you can choose, they distort the speakers somehow. I'm not sure why they do that, but uh, let me show you. Um, Lupe Fiasco. You see, that didn't sound too bad, but if you were to play something with a lot of things going on, you would get you would get a lot of distortion. But 
and here's the music player. Um, everything is in like this weird like cover flow type thing, and it looks really cool. I, I really like this. I actually like it a lot better than Apple. Um, things are really easy to choose. Now I like this because you see you can when you have the music for example let's say you're playing some music you can click here go to BOB and it takes you to everything BOB that's in your library and I like that because it's a little bit different than the way Apple has their setup um, then you could go to uh, let's see here you can search for your music so I'm going to go to David Getta. That pulls up. So if I let's say I had this whole CD, I could click here and it'll take me back to all the, the albums on the CD. I mean that songs on the CD. So it's little stuff like that that uh, Honeycomb provides. It's a little bit easier to navigate through your music. Uh, playlists are very easy to create. Things like that. Let's see what else I can cover for you guys. Oh, it's kind of stupid, but the Zoom comes with a calculator. Believe it or not, it comes with a calculator. And you guys don't, may not think that it's to be very important. But the iPad, the Galaxy Tab, the iPad 2 do not have a calculator. It sounds stupid, but I don't know why. But this has lifestyle. a lifestyle. You have Gmail and your email and stuff. Everything is in dual pane now. Contact is, uh, see I just made an order on uh, Newegg. And I can scroll through here. I can scroll over here, check, click on some more mail. Uh, let's see here, Google Calendar. Let me go here. You see, it's, everything's really easy to use, and it works really well with the two-finger, I mean, the two-thumb design as well. Let's see. Also, Google Talk. Now, this is probably one of the coolest things on here. Um, video chat is very easy. As you can see, I have a lot of people on my list. And next to each person, there's an icon. Like Carlos, I could voice chat with him. Uh, Milt, I could video chat. Orlando, I could video chat. Russell, Holly, and Simon. And uh, Lachea, I can um, video chat. And all I would literally have to do was just touch it, and then it'll video chat. It's pretty cool. That's pretty much been my review. Um, if you're asking me what I think about this, if you guys should go out and cop one or... If you guys should wait for the Wi-Fi version. If you need to be connected all the time, get the 3G version. The the plan per month is not that bad. Also, if you need to just if you have a hotspot on your phone and you always want to use it, Wi-Fi version will be good enough for you. If you're trying to decide between this and the iPad, I would say get this. If you want to be able to plug this up to another computer or have more freedom as far as managing your content on here meaning your movies music use this this is just like a thumb drive you can plug this up to a computer click and drag music over to it click and drag movies um, with an ipad you're always going to have to use itunes no matter what you do uh, unless you want to use like dropbox or anything and even so you could use dropbox with this if you wanted to as well well all right guys that's been my review of the motorola zoom if you have any questions let me know make sure you guys check out GadgetU.net and make sure you follow at GadgetUniv on Twitter and at GadgetU underscore Matt. Y'all take care. I'll see y'all next video. Peace.